As the only free-to-play spear user in the game, many people dismiss Zhongling when composing their team. Little do they know though, Zhongling provides some of the best pyro support in the game and can be a DPS rockstar as well. Today we're going to take a look at Zhongling, discuss her kit, DPS rotation, builds, and team compositions so that you can understand how to play her optimally for your team. My name is Braxophone, and this is the Ultimate Zhongling Play Guide. Please? To preface this, usually these guides are pretty long, and since there's so much content to talk about for Zhongling, I may move a bit faster than usual. If I'm moving too quickly, feel free to hit the .75 speed button or skip back to timestamps to hear sections repeated. Additionally, I won't be exploring every single weapon option for every build covered, but I will be discussing the best and most free-to-play accessible options. Let's begin with a talent overview for Zhongling. Talent number one, or her basic attack, is a 5 part spear attack with multiple attacks on some hits. Her charged attack is a drill like thrust, and her charged attack can be kind of inconsistent in how it hits some enemies, but it can be cancelled mid animation to optimize DPS, and we're going to talk about that soon. Her second talent is Guoba attack. Zhongling takes out her Guoba, which is her fire panda bear thing that she keeps on her side, and she places it on the ground in front of her. Guoba will then target the closest enemy and deal fire damage in bursts. Be sure to note that Guoba doesn't taunt enemies, so enemies will still come after you even when Guoba's on the field, and it has a 12 second cooldown. Guoba lasts about 8 seconds. Xiangling's elemental burst is called Pyronado, which sends out a spinning projectile that circles around whatever character you have out and lasts for about 10 seconds. During this time, it can consistently hit enemies for Pyro, and it's able to combo with other elements you're using, which creates tons of reaction damage if you're utilizing it correctly. On cast, it deals 3 quick hits of Pyro damage, so make sure that you're facing your main target when you cast it to get in some bonus damage. On the topic of Pyronado, Xiangling has a tech called Backhanding that can increase the amount of hits you get in with your elemental burst. Because the burst rotates clockwise, around you, if you rotate around the enemy counterclockwise, you're able to get in a bunch more hits, which may seem inefficient since you can't move while attacking, but consider the bonus damage you get from elemental procs. With elemental procs hitting more often, that means you'll get more buffed hits in, which makes this tech fairly useful for larger enemies. It pairs well if you dash cancel often too, because then you can sneak in attacks between your dashes. This tech is kind of interesting depending on the characters you're running, because some are more mobile than others, but it is very useful. Zhongling's passive 1 is Crossfire, which increases the range of Guoba Fire by 20%. It's really great for hitting more enemies at a time, and it's an awesome passive. Passive number 2 is called Beware It's Super Hot. It's an amazing enabler for the entire team. It makes it so that when Guoba leaves the field, he leaves a Chili Pepper that increases attack by 10% for the character that grabs it, which means that if you have a separate carry, you should switch to them before you pick up the Pepper, but you are going to get that 10% bonus on that character. Passive 3 is called a Chef de Cuisine, which gives Zhongling a 12% bonus chance to cook an extra attack dish. Now that our brief talent overview is over, we can move on to Constellations before we get into the best DPS rotation. Since the Ganyu banner is probably out by the time you're watching this, many of you are going to be getting constellations for Xiangling, and so here's a quick overview of her constellations. Constellation 1 is one of Xiangling's best constellations, and it comes at an amazing value. Since it reduces enemy power resistance when they get hit by Guoba, it really pairs well with Crimson Witch, and allows you to just output more damage overall after you drop your E. Constellation number 2 is awesome for DPS builds on Xiangling, since they'll be able to get an extra pyro damage hit in their normal attack combo. On your last attack, the enemies getting hit will get an implode debuff that explodes with pyro damage equal to 75% of Xiangling's attack as that pyro damage. It's a really big hit and it ends up actually offsetting the amount of damage you'll get from your full string versus a charged attack string. Constellation 3 increases Pyronado's level by 3. Constellation 4 increases Pyronado's duration by 40%, which turns the length into a 14 second ability rather than a 10 second ability, and that is a huge buff for Xiangling. Constellation number 5 is going to increase her elemental skill level by 3, and Constellation 6 is going to increase pyro damage dealt from any player in the party by 15% while Pyronado's up. This ends up just being an incredible buff for anyone who's running double pyro, but it also just helps Xiangling as well, so ultimately, probably one of her stronger constellations as well. Alright, so now that we've discussed her kit and what it does, we can talk about the best DPS rotation. For calculation purposes, we're going to be converting crit hits into normal damage to keep consistency. Each attack string was two combos long and not representative of a max hit. These combos exist to show you the most optimal basic attack combo, but not necessarily how to show how much damage a character can do. We tested five combos, and we'll talk about an animation cancel that'll greatly improve all of these combos shortly after. The first combo we looked at was 1 into charged attack, which got us a damage of 490 over 3.41 seconds for execution, and that netted us a total of 143.7 DPS. 
Shortly after, we tested 1-2 into charged attack, and there we got 616 total damage over a time period of 4.42 seconds, which yielded us 129.4 DPS. Our third combo was 1-2-3 into charged attack, and this one ended up being pretty good. We got 772 damage over 5.29 seconds. This yielded us a total DPS of 145.9. The second to last combo we worked on was 1-2-3-4 into charged attack, and this yielded us a total damage of 940 over 6.9 seconds to execute, and that got us a total DPS of 136.2. And finally, the last set that we looked at was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is just her normal basic attack combo finished with no charged attack cancelling. In total, we did 832 damage over 6.7 seconds, which got us a DPS of 124.2. Keep in mind that all of these calculations were done without the Gladiator set to keep consistency. However, if we did have the Gladiator set, we may see an increase in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 combo over some of the 1, 2, 3, 4 charge, 1, 2, 3 charge, just because the 4-piece Gladiator set doesn't influence charged attack damage at all, only normal attacks. Alright, so hopefully this isn't too confusing. The highest DPS output we found was 1, 2, 3 into charged attack, with the second highest being only slightly behind with a 1 into charged attack. Something to consider when you're choosing between spamming charged attacks or using 1, 2, 3 into charged is that you'll have a wide sweeping third attack, which means that the third attack will hit multiple enemies, so it is worth considering that if you're fighting multiple enemies at once. Now I'm going to introduce an animation cancel to you that'll shorten the time it takes to recover from these combos. We can conclude that at C0, it's worth canceling the last two attacks for a charged attack. This tech is pretty easy to do, all you have to do is jump immediately after the cast of your charged attack and then begin attacking normally when you hit the ground. Jumping right after the impact of the charged attack allows you to begin your next combo near immediately and allows you to keep pumping out damage. The reason this works is because it does damage the second you impact the enemy, so as soon as you cast that charged attack, you are going to do the damage immediately and it doesn't matter if you jump to cancel and get out of it. Note that even though 1, 2, 3 charged is best at C0, at Constellation 1 when you get our extra pyro explosion, consistently finishing the combo will catch up after 3 strings of the combo and beat out the rest if you're running 4-piece gladiator for the normal attack bonus. Now that we've talked about Zhongling's DPS optimization, optimization, we can look at two builds for Zhongling that I'm going to share with you guys today, and I will have a third build video coming out really soon, so stay tuned for that. Zhongling has a couple different ways you can run her as far as artifacts go. Some people like running her as a burst support, and other people like running her as a physical DPS, so we're going to talk about both of those builds. As far as support goes, here's an excellent build for her. So because Zhongling is able to put out so much pyro damage, and since Cryo and Hydro have become increasingly more common, I think it's best to build her with the 4-piece Crimson Witch, since it gives a 15% pyro bonus with another 50 percent bonus after using her elemental skill. Xiangling's elemental skill is often underestimated, but it's incredibly strong and getting the 4-piece Crimson Witch bonus on her pyro damage is awesome, specifically because you're not going to be auto-attacking with her at all if you're running her as a support. You're just going to keep her in the Pokeball and bring her out to get the pyro damage rolling. Now I know a lot of you are probably thinking, but Brax isn't Noblesse better for her as a support since you get a 20% damage bonus, and to that I say Noblesse is a super valuable option, and I'd even argue that if you play double pyro, it's an excellent option since you'll be able to get energy back without the help of Xiangling's E. However, the issue with Noblesse is that it takes away from her ability to make Kuoba do extra damage, but if you don't use Kuoba at all, make sure to run 2-piece Crimson Witch and 2-piece Noblesse to get the most damage out of her Q, since you do get a 20% damage for running Noblesse. And as always, if you don't care about her damage much, but you do want to buff your carry, you can always run 4-piece Noblesse as well, but you will be missing out on a lot of Pyro damage. For support, if you're not running a weapon with Energy Recharge, I would suggest Energy Recharge Sand, so that way you do get a bit more uptime on her Q. If you do find that your substats and weapon are enough, you can switch this out for attack percent just to get more Pyro damage going. On your Goblet, for support, you want to run Pyro damage, and if you have at least a 40% crit rate on your character's stats, crit damage is going to be your best stat. If not, it never hurts to have a crit rate piece since you're going to be hitting Pyro fairly consistently. Ideally, in a Vaporize and Melt comp, you want to go for Elemental Mastery, Energy Recharge, Crit Rate, Crit Damage, Attack Percent, and Flat attack on your substats. All of them are good. Elemental Mastery should be your focus though, up to a soft cap. For this purpose, I think that 300 Elemental Mastery is a good amount to shoot for. I wouldn't spend resources trying to force past 400. Again, remember we're not putting Elemental Mastery in our main stats. So this is all based on substats and a weapon if you're going to go ahead and use one of those. As far as support weapons go, Energy Recharge is never bad, but you don't necessarily need Energy Recharge if you're running Energy Recharge on your Sands. My personal favorite with this build is the 4-star Dragon's Bane, which is actually a gacha weapon, but I'm going to give you guys some free to 
play in a second. The reason it's good is because it increases damage against opponents with Hydro or Pyro on them, which means that our Pyro damage will be consistently increased if you're running a Vaporizer Melt comp. And it also gives passive Elemental Mastery, which just really helps with the overall DPS output if you are reacting with it. If you're not running a Melt comp, this will still be pretty good, but just due to how Vaporizer Melt works, Elemental Mastery scales better for them. Skyward Spine is awesome for this build because of the energy recharge and passive crit rate, but it's normal and charged attack passive will never be used. For free to play players, you do have a couple options as well. Prototype Star Glitter will fit the support role because of its primary stat being Energy Recharge, which gives you more queue up time, but again, the passive effect is useless if you're running her as a Pyro support. If you're running her as a full Pyro support, don't go for the Crescent Pike since its main stat is physical damage and it buffs normal charged attacks, which again, you don't use. One of the major problems with the spear category is that support spears are limited. Most spears are geared towards empowering normal and charged attacks. But don't let that discourage you from building Shongling though, because she's still incredibly powerful, especially with new reasons to play Cryo being introduced. One of the best 3 star free to play pull arms is the white tassel, which boosts crit rate and buffs normal attack damage. Again, you won't be using normal attacks running her as a support, but the crit rate helps and actually allows you to sub out your circlet for elemental mastery if you absolutely have to. If you guys have any questions about running support Shang Link, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer all of the ones that have questions that I have answers to. Alright, on to physical DPS. So physical DPS Shongling is a lot more straightforward. You want crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and attack, and you're just going to be spamming a lot of normal attacks. For this build, you want 4-piece Gladiator for your set with a physical damage goblet. The reason we don't run Bloodstained Chivalry is because we don't want to use Shongling's charged attack after we've gotten Constellation 1. However, if you don't have Constellation 1, you could make the argument that Bloodstained Chivalry will be good because it will buff your charged attack, whereas Gladiator's does not. Ideally, you're going to want Attack Sands, Physical Damage Goblet, and the same rule as with the support build. If you don't have at least a 40% crit rate, use a crit rate circlet, and if you do have at least 40% crit rate, go for a crit damage circlet. The rule is 40-80 minimum for crit, which means that if you can't achieve 40 crit rate and 80 crit damage, an attack percent circlet is going to net you more overall damage. And just to reiterate, you do want crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and flat attack in that order for substats. The best free to play 3 star weapon is the White Tassel again, for its crit rate stat and the normal attack damage passive. Since White Tassel can be found in chests in the overworld, it shouldn't be too hard to refine. The attack stat falls off in late game compared to 4 and 5 star alternatives, but its passive alone will compensate for that somewhat. As far as 4 star weapons go, if you're building pure physical DPS, Crescent Pike is the best option since you can drop your E skill and gain a passive boost to attack, and because the main stat is physical damage. Since this one is craftable, it should be your go too, but if you bought the battle pass, deathmatch is also extremely strong because it provides an alternative form of crit rate and increases or decreases attack based on how many enemies are nearby. I personally think the weapon is worth it for the crit rate alone, but the passive for it's really good since it doesn't require you to kill enemies at all to take effect. This is contrary to the Star Glitter Shot Black Cliff Pole, which isn't bad because it provides crit damage, but you do have to kill an enemy for its passive to take effect. My personal biggest issue with Black Cliff is that you have to proc its passive by killing enemies, which means the effect won't work during any of the current boss fights aside from maybe the Ocean Ed. I'm not sure on that one. For clearing many mob content, it's pretty functional though. And for 5 star weapons, in a shield comp, Vortex Vanquisher is broken and should be your go-to for the attack increase and passive, but if you're not running a shield comp, Primordial Jade Wing Spear is going to be your bread and butter since it has a crit rate passive, 5 star damage, and increases attack by a bunch with its passive. Skyward Spine is not a bad pick, but it has energy recharge as its primary stat, which in my opinion makes it less optimal than the other two 5 star spear options. And if you guys have any questions about physical damage Shongling, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer all the ones I can, but I do get a lot of comments, so please understand if I'm not able to get to all of them. Moving on now to the final section of the video where we talk about team composition. As discussed in previous videos, Cryo and Hydro are making their way up in popularity since the Cryo and Hydro sets really enable those archetypes to perform well. For that reason, there are going to be a lot of benefits to running Shongling. As a general rule, melee characters benefit more from Shongling than ranged, but that doesn't mean that ranged isn't good with her. Any of the current melee Cryo cast will benefit from running Shongling as a support since she's able to constantly keep up pyro damage. This means that running support Shongling alongside another free-to-play character Kaya is going to give many positive results due to Kaya being able to output cryo damage with his E and Q, and if you also happen to build Shongin as a support for Kaya and use Shongling's Q, Kaya will be putting out cryo damage consistently alongside the pyro from Shongling, which just creates a ton of melt damage. Diona is another great cryo to use with support Shongling, since at her C6, she increases elemental mastery for your team, so you'll get constant melt procs in a cryo field with bonus elemental mastery if you do have Diona at C6. This same melt principle applies to hydro comps with Shongling. If you build Jingchu as a DPS with the hydro set, you'll be able to run Shongling support in order to get consistent vaporize damage when Jingchu's Q is active. Personally, I'm a big fan of Tartaglia and Shongling, since Tartaglia spams hydro damage and it works great paired with Guoba and Pyronado. 
As far as Electro characters go, she's not awful with Lisa, but I think Support Shangling pairs a lot better with melee characters, since her Q can make her want to stay in range of enemies for maximum pyro uptime. That being said, while Razor is good, he doesn't apply enough Electro to consistently be the aura that Shangling triggers. He's an excellent Electro pick, but if you're going for efficiency, Kuching would be a better choice. And since Fischl only applies Electro on Ozdrop, she has the same issue Razor does with this synergy. That being said, none of them are really terrible at their job. Actually, Razor and Beto can do fairly well, uh, just not as well as someone like Kuchin can. Of course, for Animo, Sucrose and Venti are great for CCing enemies into Shangling's Pyro, and Shangling works well with a physical gene build to give her a little bit more extra damage output. Physical damage Shangling's best synergy, in my opinion, is Shinyan right now, just due to the Pyro Resonance and Shinyan's kit working to buff Shangling and debuff enemy physical resistance. Outside of that, physical Shangling works in any composition that doesn't change the element of her attack. If you're running physical Shangling, be careful about running Chong Yun or C6 Bennett, because you'll lose your physical damage bonus. Another consideration to keep in mind for Shangling in both builds is that Geo characters can be extremely powerful, since Shangling can crystallize and create shield shards. The reason you wouldn't want Bolide is for shield uptime being a requirement and losing out on the 18% attack bonus from Gladiator, but it's still a strong option if you don't have access to a full Gladiator set and if you're running a Geo character. And with that, you should know everything you need to know to make Xiongling either an awesome support or a great DPS carry. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope that you enjoyed. If you want to join the community, you can go ahead and join the Discord link down in the description where you can get pings when I'm going live, uploading a video, etc. On there is also my streaming schedule. I do go live regularly on Twitch and YouTube and that is changing back and forth, but if you want to see some live streams, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitch, or you can drop a sub down below. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys soon.